I'm all about accountability. The other day I screwed up. When I heard the distressing news that Fogo de Chao, one of my favorite places, Brazilian Steakhouse, had taken funds from the cash trap Payroll Protection Program, I got angry. Fogo de Chao is run by a private equity firm. This was supposed to be a small business bailout. But I blame the wrong private equity firm. I thought Thomas H. Lee Partners still owned this chain. But the truth is, they sold it years ago. Now it belongs to a totally different outfit. Thomas H. Lee owns a bunch of companies, but they haven't taken a penny from the payroll protection program. However, there's a silver lining here. When Thomas H. Lee's gracious co-president, Scott Sperling, reached out to ask for a correction, we got to talking about the pandemic. He gave us the perfect chance to invite him on the show. In addition to running a private equity firm with a lot of automation and software businesses, he's also the chairman of Mass General Brigham Health System. Hey, that's the parent of some of the most important hospitals in Boston. So he's got a unique perspective here. He, he has always been a friend of CNBC. Mr. Sperling, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for uh, graciously pointing out um, the, our non-ownership uh, at Fogo. It was a great deal for us where we tripled the size of it, but uh, we haven't owned it for a number of years, as you point out. And uh, we're very mindful of the situation that we're in today. Um, we've worked very hard across our portfolio to make sure that we have a high level of self-sufficiency. Um, and as you uh, have also graciously pointed out, have not taken uh, triple P money. Well, Scott, let me ask you, you do have a huge portfolio. Uh, let's say uh, these companies were all based in Georgia, okay? And Georgia's got a reopening plan. How many of them do you think you would reopen? And how many of them are open now? And how many of them would you say, is the governor out of his mind? <laughs> well, I'm not going to make the political, any political comment. Uh, smart, there are a lot smarter people uh, than me, like you. Uh, but uh, we, we're, 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 we're very careful about this. Uh, as we entered this period, um, we were able to deploy our very large team of operating experts across our portfolio to position each company for what we thought could be a six to 12 month period of uncertainty uh, and of challenges on the revenue side make sure that every company was sufficiently liquid to uh, take uh, care of themselves on, um, uh, let's call it a reasonably worst-case basis. Um, as we enter a period where we believe that there will be an opportunity to reopen more fully, you know, we want to be equally careful. And okay. so our team has prepared a document that has 100 different items to it, a checklist, effectively, to ensure the safety of our employees across the entirety of our portfolio and to make sure our companies are very mindful uh, of both the challenges but also some opportunities that may exist, for, particularly for very specific portfolio companies. Well, let me ask you, as chairman of uh, one of the most important healthcare systems in the world, is it your perspective that the media is too negative, the president might be too positive? I'm not trying to be political here, but I am leading to this. There are a lot of people, including people that I've talked to at your institution, who think that a vaccine could be closer than I realize, because I think it's three years out. Where are you in terms of the ultimate kill of COVID-19? <laughs> So I, I think the uh, more immediate, uh, the more immediate breakthroughs will be in the therapeutic side. Okay. I think a vaccine, uh, according to our folks, is probably at least a year away in terms of being uh, fully deployable. Uh, we have teams of researchers that are involved in almost every one of the major efforts on the vaccine side, and so I think we are optimistic that there will be one. But to be realistic, we have to assume that that's a 12 to 18 month time frame, hopefully not three years. But in the meantime, I think we're making breakthroughs in a couple of areas. The first is a number of the therapeutics that we are major test centers for are showing very positive results, and we're learning how to best use those therapeutics. Uh, and the therapeutics would be both antivirals, but also IL-6 inhibitors, which deal with the inflammation that seems to be the cause of some of the most um, uh, high acute uh, uh, case complexities. So we're really learning a lot about that. We're also making uh, breakthroughs in terms of what the protocols are for patients. I think we've all been a bit disappointed in the experience with ventilators. I know there was a story in Bloomberg talking about a 90% um, uh, mortality rate for people going on ventilators in New York City, not quite as bad in Massachusetts. And if you're at a place like the Mass General or the Brigham, uh, it's actually closer to 50%, so much better results, but still not where we want it to be. 
And what we're learning is that there are many things that we can do uh, before we get to that point that has had a very positive impact on patient outcomes. The other thing that we know is that most of the uh, fatalities are, are uh, of people who are um, elderly or with uh, significant comorbidities of one of five different types. The elder, so the elderly population is what's really driving much of the death rates, the average age of uh, people in Italy that we saw was 79.6 years right. old. It's not much different in terms of what we're seeing, at least at our own institutions. Um, so well, it really is uh, focused from a from a mortality perspective on uh, mostly an elderly population. Right, well, Scott, you did say something. I, I know we can't be anecdotal. We have to be empirical. We have to have control. But when you talk about the IL-6, when you talk about some of the things that we're seeing, the antibodies, uh, that does make me uh, uh, optimistic. I don't want to get too optimistic. We had something like that happen last week in Chicago. But is it your perspective that the test that you see going on, without revealing anything, the test you see going on would make us feel better as a people who are so fearful right now once we get to the hospital? I, I believe so. I think that, you know, there have been early reports out on uh, – a, a number of different antivirals, let me just say that. And I think what we're seeing is um, reasonably good results, and we're learning how to best utilize those antivirals at what point and for whom. Um, so I, I do think we're making very good progress. You know, look, th this is a – they call it novel for a reason. Nobody's had it. Right. We're all susceptible to it. It spreads like wildfire because of that, and um, the uh, the only um, the only positive is the virulence for most people is not high. Uh, it 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 leaves many people uh, with um, mild to asymptomatic uh, condition, and uh, I think our healthcare system is getting much better at dealing with the people who actually need hospitalization. We've done a really good job. I, in Massachusetts, um, Charlie Baker, our governor, Marty Walsh, the mayor of Boston, many other politicians have worked hand in hand with our health care system, and we've made sure that we have the appropriate capacity to deal with the high acuity cases that may pop up so that we don't have situations where people are waiting in hallways for life-saving uh, help. Well, look, Scott, I want to thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for all the things you're doing to try to help save save lives and for running a fantastic firm. Scott, Spur Scott Sperling well, is the co-president. Thank you, sir. Pri a private equity firm, Thomas H. Lee, and the chairman of Mass General Brigham. Good to talk to you, sir, as always. Thanks so much, Jim. Take care. Yep. Good deed, doer. I like it. Sick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.